One last ace. Item number, SCP-5696. Object class, safe, neutralized. Special containment procedures. SCP-5696 is kept in anomalous item locker number 5696 at site 19. No further procedures are considered necessary. Initial containment procedures. Prior to entering SCP-5696-A, subjects are to be given a button camera fashioned to look like a pin supporting William H. Thompson for the 1931 Chicago mayoral election. The camera should be placed on the subject's left label after entering SCP-5696-A. During the displacement of SCP-5696-1 into SCP-5696-A, the SCP-5696 testing chamber is to be monitored for their return. Description SCP-5696 is a revolver resembling a Smith & Wesson M&P.39.38 in both function and design. The weapon bears two engravings, the first being a manufacturer engraving along the cylinder, reading SNW Motto EO11CS. Footnote No such model is known to have been produced and the second on one side of the barrel reading, Finish this job. Kill that cheating bastard. Sick. When, when SCP-5696 is held in the right hand of a subject, and the cylinder is opened using that hand, the subject, henceforth SCP-5696-1, will be displaced into SCP-5696-A. Footnote. This is no longer the case, following test 5696-129. SCP-5696-A refers to an alternate dimension consisting primarily of a nightclub named The Dying Roses, a building that was once located at, a, at blank Division Street, Chicago, which closed in 1956. Displaced subjects will find themselves dressed in formal attire appropriate for the early 1930s, regardless of what they were dressed in prior to displacement. This includes a striped suit and matching dress pants, a blue tie, white undershirt, and a striped fedora. All objects on their person will have dim manifested until their return, where they will find themselves dressed in their original clothing with the same belongings. Alterations to the subject's physical body made while within SCP-5696-A will remain, however. <clears throat> Note that SCP-5696-1 will displace with $1, $5, and $10 bills in varying amounts, totaling up to $100, in their left inner coat pocket. But note. Note that due to inflation, this would be worth approximately $1,550 to $1,890 in 2022. No items can be brought out of or taken into SCP-5696-A, with the exception of any object held in SCP-5696-1's left hand during their removal from our dimension. Displacement only occurs within subjects who meet a certain set of physical specifications. See document 5696-M5 for full list. These include particular height and BMI limitations, but do not include race or sex requirements. When viewed upon immediate entry, the area surrounding the dying roses consists of empty space. SCP-5696-A will construct an environment dependent on the needs or requirements of SCP-5696-1. This usually begins with a cityscape of apartment buildings, but has also included rival clubs, hospitals, fire stations, and police stations. SCP-5696-A also creates smaller objects as needed, including 
but not limited to, telephone poles, call boxes, and motor vehicles. During their shift into SCP-5696-A, the subject will experience a series of semi-predictable events. Events that can't that occur can have varying outcomes or be prevented entirely based on the actions taken by SCP-5696-1. While in SCP-5696-A, in some cases, actions have been led to notable and or unusual events occurring. See Addendum 5696-2 None of the events are particularly anomalous, but rather reflect real actions that may have been taken by the involved entities and the consequences thereof. The following details the most commonly recorded series of events. Zero Hour to One SCP-5696-1 will be ushered to a seat at the bar as they wait for the rest of their party. Footnote. This is also often recorded as wait for Mr. Jackson and his friends, as well as wait for your friend and the others. Although subjects may do as they please. Subjects have been recorded as having ordered food and drinks. Footnote. Despite evidence suggesting that the substance has been outlawed within SCP-5696-A's simulated society, the beverages often contain alcohol. Purchasing cigars or cigarettes, interacting with waitstaff and other customers, speaking with and or paying stage dancers, and in some cases, engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But note. This usually occurs due to subjects catcalling certain dancers whose, husband, whose husbands are in the establishment. 101 to 145. Five men. SCP 5696 2 3 4 5 6 will enter the establishment over the course of 45 minutes and mill about the area. They most commonly spend this time sitting next to each other at the bar and ordering various drinks. Each of them will eventually begin to smoke and talk among themselves. 146 to 159 SCP-5696-2 through dash 6 will enter a room at the far end of the establishment that is closed off by a pair of red curtains. SCP-5696-1 will be ushered into a room by a member of the waitstaff and will be introduced to the men as Mark Kennedy of the CPD. Footnote. Chicago Police Department. Easier on behalf of Niti's gain. This is like footnote. This likely refers to Frank Nitti, de facto leader of the Chicago outfit following Al Capone's arrest in 1931. They will stare at the SCP-5696-1 in silence for roughly five seconds before laughing and shaking their hand. SCP-5696-5 will offer SCP-5696-1 a cigarette if they don't already have one, and the member of waitstaff will offer them a drink. SCP-5696-5 will show them to an open seat around, the, around a table covered in green felt. 2 to 6. SCP-5696-1 through dash 6 will begin to play Texas Hold'em using direct monetary bets. From here, similarities become less common and the timeline of events begins to differ due to subject input. Play styles, game outcomes, conversation topics, and general actions influence what occurs. Addendum 5696-1 Characteristics of SCP-5696-2 through dash 6 Note, the following information has been gathered through a total of 129 tests. SCP-5696-2 Name, Jack Walker Age, 37-40 to 40. Relatives, single, never married no children. 
profession. Trumpet player, the Jimmy Michaels Brass Band. Play style, quiet, only makes safe bets. Notes. Does not drink as he believes the hangover ruins his performing abilities. Often leaves the table for fresh air. Occasionally performs with the Dying Roses Jazz Band when he is having a particularly good night. Displays nervousness when involved in conversations regarding all law-related subjects. Has occasionally claimed to know SCP-5696-1 from work. SCP-5696-3 Name Casey Malkovich Age 22-23 to 23. Birthday occasionally occurs Relatives Girlfriend No children Profession Underground boxing champion Play style Bluffs often Often Folds rarely Notes Overdramatic personality Has repeatedly made threats to Fight every person in this godforsaken hellhole if I lose this next hand. Attends the University of Chicago, but refuses to state his major. Always has a large sum of money on his person. SCP-5696-4 Name Roy Jacobson Age 25-29 to 29. Relatives Single Never married no children. Profession. Unemployed. Play style. Unfamiliar with the game. Makes large bets apparently at random. Notes. Claims to be the son of a millionaire Wall Street broker. Regularly offers to buy drinks for every person at the table. Occasionally for the entire population of SCP-5696-A. Often becomes overly inebriated and has been caught paying dancers and crying to them on more than 35 occasions. Dodges questions regarding personal matters of all forms. SCP-5696-5 Name Jake Rose Age 32 Relatives Married One son Play style Exceptional bluffing Rarely ma makes a net loss. Notes. Served as a rifleman in the First World War. Often shares war stories. Most commonly a story regarding a grenade shrapnel rune wound. Sustained in the upper right thigh. Became an expert at poker while in the trenches. His business par partners with SCP-5696-6. Which claims he does not participate in illegal activity. Claims the nightclub is named after. The one time bullet hit the very top of my helmet and nearly killed me. SCP-5696-6 Name Clyde Jackson Age 33 Relatives Married One son, one daughter Play style Average Occasionally makes larger bets when on a losing streak. Notes Proprietor of the Dying Roses is involved with the Chicago outfit and regularly discusses the location's use as a front for cocaine production and sale, despite the Chicago outfit's distaste for drug use. Served with SCP-5696-5 in the First World War. Usually jovial, even in dark times. Occasionally has his wife visit the establishment, and spends considerable amounts of time talking about his family. Addendum 5696-2 List of Notable Discrepancies Test Number 3 Time 120 Event A female test subject was used. SCP-5696-1 was removed for the build from the building for impersonating Mr. Kennedy. She even wore his fucking clothes. SCP-5696-A was viewed, forming a full cityscape. SCP-5696-1 spent the remainder of the time in the parking lot and wandering through the streets of SCP-5696-A. Test number 24. 
Time. 5. Event. SCP-5696-1 repeatedly bet all their money on their person. But note, this is often considered rude or unsportsmanlike. SCP-5696-3 punched SCP-5696-1, knocking them unconscious. Test number. <clears throat> number. 27. Time. 325. Event. Two thieves attempted to rob the nightclub at gunpoint. Every patron and member of the waitstaff drew a firearm on the thieves, including SCP-5696-1. They left peacefully. Test number 39. Time 205. Event. SCP-5696-1 immediately shot SCP-5696-6 for losing a hand to him. It was immediately fired upon by SCP-5696-5. SCP-5696-1's corpse was transported and dumped into the Chicago River. SCP-5696-1 returned dead, with five bullet wounds in the chest, and entirely soaked. Test number 52. Time 4.45. Event. SCP-5696-1 requested a taste test from SCP-5696-6 during a conversation regarding drug sales. SCP-5696-6 obliged. During the last hour, SCP-5696-6 led SCP-5696-1 around a back room. SCP-5696-1's coat accidentally caught fire causing him to panic. He ripped the jacket off and threw it into a puddle of spilled alcohol, setting the establishment ablaze. Dash 1 returned with severe third-degree burns. Test number 66. Time, 4.30. Event. Dash 1 had one each hand played that session. Dash 6 bet the deed to the establishment. Dash 1 played four aces. Time. 5. Event. Dash 1 had all patrons and all but two waitstaff members removed from the location, including Dash 2 through Dash 6. Dash 1 spent the night becoming intoxicated among the female performers and engaging in sexual activity. Some patrons began to approach a police call box when they were denied re-entry and were stopped by other patrons. Test number 94. Time, 1.45. Event. Dash 3 declared that it was his birthday. No playing occurred, and Dash 3 was baked and served a chocolate cake. A portion of the day was spent celebrating his birthday. Test number, 105. Time, 3.35. Event. In an attempt to make conversation, Dash 1 asked the other players what their favorite television shows were. Dash 1 spent the next hour attempting to explain various products of modern technology to them, before Dash 3 called a hospital. Dash 1 spent the remainder of the night in the back of a white Rolls Royce, bearing red crosses, where he was questioned about his sanity. Test number 127. Time 5. Event. Test 127 Video Log File Name Test underscore 5696-127 Date January 21st, 2020 Print Transcription Yes Beginning Auto Transcription Skipping to designated event portion A full transcription may be requested from Dr. Patra Lead Researcher on SCP-5696 459. SCP-50 Ace Dash 1 has been looking at Dash 5 on and off over the course of the last 10 minutes. Okay. What's wrong, kid? Something on my face? No, I just can't help but notice that what you lack in beauty you seem to be making up for in card skills. By letting us win some hands, you might have more fun. 
Hey, I'm sorry God's been wanting me to have your money. I can't help that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm sure that's what's going on. 5.03. Dash 1 folds his current hand, then stands. Gents, I'm gonna take a piss. Dash 1 walks around the left side of the table, despite this being a longer route to the room's exit. 5.04. Dash 1 removes the pen and sets it on the table by Dash 5. Hold on to this for me, will ya? What, giving up politics, kid? Whatever. Hey, while you're in there, do me a favor and go fuck yourself, too. 5.04 to 5.09. Dash 1 spends five minutes presumably in the bathroom. Note that Dash 5 is recorded removing cards from his current hand and replacing them with cards from his coat via sleight of hand twice. 510. Dash 1 returns and places the pin over his left, left breast again. Dash 1 shoots Dash 5 through the sternum before turning the gun on Dash 6. You dirty, cheating bastard! He's been swapping cards for the last 10 hands! Watch this! Dash 1 kneels down over SCP Dash 5, who is alive but bleeding profusely. He removes Dash 5's coat and holds it upside down, shaking it twice. Cards flutter and fall out the sleeves of and pockets. Dash 2 leaves the room unnoticed. Jesus Christ, Jake. 511. Shouting comes from outside the room. This is the Chicago Police Department. You're all under arrest. Eat shit and lead, pig! Dash 1 runs for the room's exit and steps through the curtains. Half of the patrons are running for an exit, while the other half have begun flipping tables and firing handguns in the direction of the bar. Including Dash 2. The waitstaff have taken cover under the bar and are firing into the tables. Note that the remaining patrons have removed their jackets, revealing CPD badges on their undershirts. Holy fuck! Dash 1 dives behind a table next to another person. Tough crowd, huh, Mr. Kennedy? Understatement of the century. Hey, let me get the hell out of here. I'd like to be alive when they interview me. 512. Two members of the wait staff run out of the door to the back room and duck under the bar. They open fire using Remington Model 31 shotguns. Ah, shit. Yeah, okay. I'll cover you. Get to the back exit. The patron gestures behind him. Dash 1 readies himself for a moment before sprinting towards the back's exit. The back exit. Dash 1 screams, falls, and turns around. Dash 6 stands at the other end of the room, aiming a handgun at Dash 1. The patron aims around the table and shoots Dash 6 through the left eye. A member of wait staff blasts the patron's hand off with a shotgun round. Dash 1 turns his left leg over, revealing a gunshot wound in the upper calf. Dash 1 regains his footing and limps out of the exit, throws off his coat, and wraps his leg in the undershirt. Fuck. 513 to 515. Dash 1 limps down a alleyway towards a police call box, attempting to put his coat back on. Dash 1 opens the box and removes the telephone. Hello, officer. Name and badge number. Officer Mark Kennedy up. Fuck me. SCP-5696 fires in Dash 1's right pants pocket, presumably shooting the ground. Dash 1 removes SCP-5696 and turns it over. The engraving on SCP-5696 barrel reads, 1017. Officer Mark Kennedy, badge number 1017. 
I'm in need of immediate assistance. I've been shot in the back of the leg of the dying roses. May need backup in there. Fucking hell. Understood. Putting out an urgent call to other officers in the area. Please wait there. The operator hangs up the phone. 5.15 to 5.17. Dash 1 sits on the ground against the phone post in silence, trying to keep his leg raised. 5.17. A white Model B Ford arrives and two others drive past. Dash 1 is loaded into the passenger seat by an unseen figure. 5.17 to 5.59. The figure is dressed in the same clothing as Dash 1 and possesses a similar build. The smi figure smiles weakly, then begins driving. Note that the figure had a bullet wound in his upper right chest, which appeared to puncture the heart, but was not bleeding. Dash 1 turns to look out the window, then removes the pin and holds it against the glass. The vehicle drives past a line of other iterations of the Dying Roses, most of which are identical in nature. The figure chuckles quietly. One of the locations appears to have been burnt down. The figure stops in front of what appears to be the Rush University Medical Center. The figure enters the hospital, and four members of the medical staff run out to the car with a stretcher five minutes later. Dash 1 is carried out of the car and into the hospital. Medical staff removed the jacket and no relevant video was captured until Dash 1's return into our reality. 6. Dash 1 is returned holding the pin and possessing an improperly cauterized wound. Marker marks made along Dash 1's lower leg imply that Dash A's medical staff intended to amputate the leg. Dash 1 retrieved, received proper medical care, and made a full recovery. End transcription. Test number 128. Time 05. Event The engraving on, five, on SCP 5696's barrel was not present. The interior of the dying rose was significantly darkened and contained only one person. A spotlight was aimed at a patron dressed in similar clothing and possessing a similar physique to SCP-5696-1, who was sitting at the bar. The figure possessed a CPD badge which he wore openly on his suit. He smiled weakly at Dash 1 and offered them a shot glass filled with scotch. Dash 1 noted that the area felt abnormally cold, but was warmer in the light. The subject and the figure held a toast, then sat in silence for 10 to 15 seconds. The figure stood, removed his badge and firearm, and placed them on the encounter, then turned to leave. He stopped at the door, turned to face SCP-5696-1, thanked them, then left the establishment. The subject spent the remainder of the time in the empty building. Test number 129. Time. Zero hour. Event. SCP-5696 did not displace the subject. The engraving on the barrel, side of the barrel read, Mark Kennedy, 1901-2020. to 2020.